but Tishuk inflation is currently at a 21-year high in Ireland. Ireland is now contending with a cost of living um, crisis on, mul on multiple fronts. It is causing wide-scale financial pain for every citizen and due in no small part to the government's climate action uh, policies. The carbon tax is the key contributing factor, with motor fuels up over 22.6 per cent and home heating oil a staggering 70 per cent in the last year alone, not to mention road diesel and agri-diesel. For example, soaring petrol and diesel prices caused in large part to the government's uh, uh, disjointed climate action uh, 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 policies of, leaning, of taxing consumers and leaning heavy on them, disproportionately affecting people in rural Ireland, but everybody in the country also, who have very people in rural Ireland have very limited access to public transport or alternative fuel uh, sources. Under your government's uh, taxation and fu uh, fuel, the motors is now paying approximately 170 per litre for petrol, of which a staggering one euro goes to the coffers of the government, or 60 per cent of the, of the goes directly into the government coffers, and mainly due to um, excise duty, uh, VAT, and carbon taxes. The government imposed carbon tax now at 41 euro per tonne of carbon after last October's budget is clearly having a bruising impact on, on the cost of home heating oil, electricity, petrol and diesel is now the leading cause of inflation here in Ireland. Chief, I ask you today, why have you completely ignored the European Commission's uh, developed tools, toolbox strategy of measures which encourages member states to cut taxes and, and, and levies on motor fuels and home heating oil and electricity bills? In Spain, for example, they have used this policy and it's brought energy prices back to 2018 levels. This is being done uh, by cutting taxes and capping costs. Other EU states, such as Sweden, have also implemented tax cutting measures. The energy crisis brings major repercussions for every household, small business and farmer, in, and, uh, in the, and really it's, it's uh, financially crippling. And we all know that, and you're talking about it, it requires meaningful and tangible state intervention. Even the, 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 the unelected EU bureaucrats recognise that would, uh, and have recommended your government and our member states take action. We have, uh, why have you completely ignored the European Commission? Normally, when they say jump, you say how high, and if it's up, up taxes, you'd have it up the day after. But in this case, you're just bluntly ignoring it. Fine Gael, Fianna Fáil, and indeed the Greens in government have totally ignored this. High energy prices have a, a deeply profound socio-economic consequences. Therefore, an immediate and meaningful state um, intervention is, is required, not the paltry 100 euro of the ESB. Taoiseach, you need to immediately act on the European Commission's DIY toolkit aimed at uh, mitigating the impact of higher energy prices by slashing the taxes and offering help uh, to the impacted households, motors, agriculture and all sectors in the economy. Immediately reverse uh, the decision to increase the carbon tax in the budget uh, 2022 and beyond until further impact is analysis and a cost benefit analysis and impact analysis is taken. Immediately do, uh, take those actions. Not talking about it. Talk is cheap. Thank you. Yeah, well, I'm going to have to restate what I said earlier. This time last year, a barrel of oil on international markets traded at $61. Today, it's $91 a barrel. That is not because of the carbon tax. It is very dishonest to say that the carbon tax is the key contributor to fuel, in, to, to fuel inflation. It is not the key, it is not the key con contributor in any shape or form. And we need to be honest with the public, because I know there will be attempts made to misrepresent what has been a global uh, situation in terms of the price of oil and the price of gas. We only hope that conflict doesn't break out in relation to Russia Ukraine, which could even exacerbate it further, uh, which is something we do not want at all. And gas on international markets, as I said, have quadrupled over the past year. That's not because um, of the carbon tax. And on the other side of the coin, we do want to release unprecedented funding to people through grants to enable them to retrofit their homes, to make them more energy efficient and cheaper to run in the future. That's what we want to do, to prioritise that area. It makes sense to insulate homes and we give good grants to people. We will give good grants to people to enable them um, to do that. And likewise, on, on, on looking after low-income families and the fuel allowance and so on, we were able to take measures in the last budget on the social welfare package because of the revenue that has been generated uh, from the carbon tax itself and likewise in terms of the farming environmental schemes that are important to create new income streams uh, for farming. But in no way does it contribute 
to the enormity of the increase in the cost of oil and gas that has happened because of global factors. The other factor is, of course, if you take cars, you know, there's been a shortage in terms of microchip manufacturing. Uh, it's been less cars as the economies have bounced back across the world. Uh, the demand for cars does not equal the supply of cars. That, that is causing inflation. That's just one product. That can be mirrored in product after product since economies have reopened after COVID-19. And that is, along with the oil and gas, is fueling this inflationary um, cycle. Um, and that is a challenge. You know, that is why some economists in the ECB are saying it's short term. Uh, that's, but, but others disagree. There are two schools of thought as to how long this cycle will last. Uh, but the, the hope would be that the balance, the imbalance at the moment between supply and demand would correct itself over time and help to reduce um, inflationary um, pressures. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we have some very significant key objectives of government, which is housing, uh, to get supply up in housing and build as many houses as we can, to get a strong climate change agenda once and for all and not keep putting it on the long finger and avoiding action, and also dealing with uh, health reforms and to use what we learned in the pandemic to embed reforms in our health service um, for the long term. And we're not going to be distracted from those key focus points of government and our agenda in terms of doing what's right by the people, uh, just, not just now, but right into the future. Thank you, Tishuk. Deputy McGrath. Tishuk, it's a European dishonest with the people and they know it. I don't think the last time you pulled up at a filling station and filled your own car because you have a driver. You had when you were leader of Fianna and you have a state drivers now and everything else, so you don't know, you're out of touch completely. I asked you to do an immediate uh, reversal of the carbon tax, and you're flatly refusing that, and do an impact analysis. I'm also asking, given that uh, you know, there's that's such uh, inflationary policies here, that we need a mini-budget. Nothing short of a mini-budget. And if we need legislation to do it, we in the rural independence will bring it forward, and you can vote against it, which you probably will. You don't want to help the people. You want to let them perish and, and die in the ditches. That's what they're going to do. And that's been your arisen data on politics. They hell with the people. Once I'm all right, Jack, I'm fine. And you accuse me of being dishonest when I tell you the naked, naked, naked truth. As well, everyone dog in the street knows it. That it's, 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 it's your policies that are causing the inflation. There are international factors, yes, definitely. But we have a pressing storm here in a Suchi. You want people to have no cares, you want to be able to have no services in rural Ireland, herd them all into the cities. You, talk, you bring the homeless into dinner, or you bring the, the housing crisis. You're talking about it for years. If talk we built houses, we'd be covered in houses. Talk is cheap. Action we need, and we need a mini budget you, to be brought forward here to relieve the stress and, and pain and the mental health issues that are on our families with the stress Thank and the pain and, and the shortage of money. Um, first of all, I said to, to the deputy that look, from the outset, the government has been committed. Uh, first of all, to, to uh, supporting workers and people on the ground. So no government wants people to perish. No government wants people to die in the ditches. For God's sake, let's, get, let's have some common sense here uh, and some sense of perspective. And th the bottom line is this, that the government right now is considering measures over and above what we've already undertaken in the budget, which was over a billion in terms of tax and in terms of social uh, welfare packages. We're now looking at further measures to cushion the blow that this inflationary cycle is imposing on people. And it is a global phenomenon, the inflation. There's no question about that. No one's arguing. Nobody is arguing please, um, about please, that. Please. What we need to do now is to take measures that can ease the pressure on people's everyday weekly outgoings uh, on a number of fronts. That's what we're examining. Uh, and before the end of the week, uh, we will have proposals to add to the decisions uh, that we've already taken. Um, in respect to this. And we do understand fully the pressures that people are under, and we're going to deal with it. Thank you, Tisha. Now, on behalf of